this is Sarah McCann, teaching artist with the Keswick Weisenwell Art Program, here again from my home studio to do the first of a two-part video teaching you how to make a mosaic stepping stone. So these stepping stones um, that we'll be laying the mosaic design for, you will need eventually. You don't need it for this first part, and the nice thing about this process is it makes it so you can lay out your mosaic design without having to carry around the heavy stepping stone. Just decide what size you want it to be, and then what we're going to need for this first part is a piece of cardboard cut to the size of the mosaic you want to make. This is going to be a 12 inch by 12 inch, which then also matches my stepping stone. Things you need in addition to the stepping stone and the cardboard cut to the side is some glass. It can be whole sheets of stained glass. It can be pieces that you've already got cut up. I'll be doing a quick demo for how to cut the stained glass. Um, and if you're going to be doing that part, you'll also want a straight edge. You'll want some sort of glass scorer. If you're going to be doing a lot of these, I suggest investing in one of these, which you can put the oil in and last a lot longer. You can also get the cheap ones just at Home Depot or any hardware store, um, and those will be fine too. Some glass pliers. I like these plastic ones with the line on them. I find them really easy to use. They also sell metal ones. Those are fine too. Glass nippers so you can cut um, smaller pieces. And then, of course, your protective equipment, gloves and uh, goggles. Other things, you'll need a roll of clear contact paper, a Sharpie, and some masking tape, or any kind of tape, really. So to get started, if you are going to cut your own glass, um, and I get my stained glass at a place called um, the Artist Corner up on Bellar Road if you're in Baltimore. If you're not in Baltimore, you can order it online. There's probably some place closer to you you can get it. Um, but make sure you've got your eyewear so you can... Put that on while you're cutting the glass and then what I do is I always use a straight edge because I like my pieces of glass pretty even and you can line that up take your scorer and as long as you're hearing that noise you know that it's going through the glass and doing what you need it to do so we'll just do a couple rows like that and you will I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video but you will get um, a line all the way down and then what you do with that line is you use the line on your pliers you line them up and it'll split the glass right where you scored it so I like to make nice square pieces um, sometimes they won't cut exactly that's okay you can just turn around and do the same thing on the other side to cut it all the way through um, and so then you'll take your nippers and what you do with these nippers, they have to be round if you're cutting glass. There's also nippers that are for tile, which will have a um, flat edge, but make sure it's got the wheels on it for glass cutting. And you'll line it up. You, wanna, you don't want to put it too far into the glass. You just need to hit the edge, and then you'll just cut it. I like to cut squares that are about the same size. For these sharp pieces, you might need those little sharp edges. I'll hold it up so you can see it. Um, but be careful because they will cut you, um, and that's why we also have the gloves. So if you're going to be trying to pick up your pieces, put the gloves on. Um, cut those there. But I usually make a cup for sharp pieces, and I'll just put all the little slivers in there so you don't hurt yourself. Um, when you've cut a bunch, what you can do is put it in empty cup or a can works really well for this too. I'm going to put my glove on so I don't have to pick them up with my fingers. And if you just put them in the cup, cover it up, shake them a bit, and then don't open this right away because what that shaking does, it takes off all the little slivers and extra pieces. Set it aside, let it sit so all of that can settle to the bottom, and then you've got your pieces that are ready to lay out. Um, so you can see I've cut a bunch already here, so we'll get started with that and with the next step for making the mosaics. And just one thing, if you are wondering about this piece that I've got down on the studio, it's a grid and it actually can catch all the little shards of glass so that you don't have to sweep them up at the end, you can just dump them out from this grid. Um, so if you have one of those, that's great. You can also get this at the Artist Corner um, or order it online. So take a look for that. If, you wanna, if you're going to be cutting a lot of glass, it really helps the cleanup. 
So once you've got your glass cut, you're ready to start designing your mosaic. Um, so this clear contact paper, same stuff you'd use as in your drawers, you're gonna take that and you're gonna cut it to the size of the cardboard that is the size of your stepping stone. Um, so you will need a pair of scissors, which I don't seem to have put out here. Luckily, we're in my home studio, so I know where everything is. And then you can just cut your contact paper to the same size. And this does have to be clear contact paper, and you'll see why in a moment. paper will still be a little bit curly. Use some masking tape and you can tape the corners down because for this first part we're actually going to draw the design right onto the contact paper. And so if we were making a mosaic directly onto the stepping stone or some other backer board you'd be able to do so and lay it out in exactly the way it would appear. But since we're going to do a transfer method, we're actually going to have to lay out the design backwards. And that's why this works with the clear contact paper, because you can draw it, and then you can design it, and then you'll see we'll flip the contact paper over um, and be able to do all of the laying of the glass backwards. So I am going to do a heart design on this, and it's going to be pretty simple, because simpler it is, the easier it's going to be to lay out, the nicer it'll look once you get it outside, but I am going to put a second heart inside, maybe a couple, just little extra design patterns around, we'll see, I'm not sure, I like those, I may decide not to put those in there, but, so once I've got my pattern drawn onto the contact paper, untape it, And just see my contact paper is not exactly the right size, that's okay. You're just going to want to make sure you lay it out on the cardboard. So, here we go. You're going to peel off the back of your contact paper. And as you do that, you're also going to tape this, now the sticky side is up, back onto the cardboard. So you can kind of go around and do each corner as you go. I try to just use the same piece of tape, but if that doesn't work for you, just grab a new piece of tape to tape it on. Try not to get yourself stuck to it. So there you go. Now you can see your design through the paper. If you put words or anything on there, they'll now be backwards, and I'll show you a couple examples of that when we finish, because that's what my work usually looks like, is words and text. Um, so it automatically flips it over for you. And then we're gonna lay that down. And then all this glass you've cut, you're now ready to start laying down. If you're using stained glass, you wanna look at it because sometimes one side is different than the other and you may have a side you really like much better, a side with texture. So the side that's actually gonna be face up in your finished mosaic has to go face down on your design because it's gonna to stick to the contact paper and we're eventually gonna adhere the stepping stone directly to the glass. So this will be the side of the glass that, that hits the side of the stepping stone. Yep, so the fun part now is just laying out all these pieces. It's like doing a puzzle. You may have to cut some glass down. You may have to find pieces that fit. Some people I know also just take their glass and put it, wrap it up in newspaper and hit it with a hammer and use all different shapes and sizes. You gotta be careful with that. It does make some sharp edges sometimes, so make sure you're still wearing your gloves. As long as you've done what we did and cut the glass and shaken it up in a container to kind of knock those sharp edges off, you should be okay. I just would make sure you're not rubbing your hands across the glass or trying to scoop up glass with your bare hands because that's how you get 
cut in little slivers. Um, so we'll just keep going here. Um, so as you're putting down the glass, you want it to be close, but not touching. Usually you want to be able to slide a coin in between the pieces of glass, but you do want them as close as you can with that little sliver in between. And I'll see if I can show you. So you see these are all close together. For these spaces, I'm going to find smaller pieces that will actually fit in there and fill it in. And so, Doing the design, you also want to think about color. So this heart, I'm going to want to really pop, and so I'm going to put a color next to it that's really going to complement it and be different. Like if I lined up a pink and like a purple next to each other, that might be really hard to see. Um, but you'll see this pink and this blue type color, those are really going to um, be different and you'll really be able to see the heart. And then I may just do the blue to color in the middle, or I may do a different color that will also be different. Um, I've got some yellow here I was thinking of using, so that might actually go into the center of the heart. And this yellow glass actually, you know, if you'll be able to see it, has a texture on it. And so that texture I'm gonna put face down because I want that to be in the final mosaic also. And so you'll just keep on laying out the mosaic, get a playlist you really like or something to put on in the background if you like to watch TV while you work. I do that sometimes um, and you're just going to keep filling up this mosaic as far as you can. I'll come back with these but in the meantime I will show you some that I have already done. So just so you can see here's my table of work in progress. I've got these three. You see them low. Music and grace mosaic stepping stones laid out. Um, they're a little bit larger than the one we're working on today, about 16 inches, but these are all set to be adhered to the stepping stone. So that's what yours will look like when you're done. of how you want to fill this in. Um, you've seen the ones that are completely filled in. I'm gonna keep going on this and I'll show you the finished product once it's all filled in and how to cut some smaller pieces if you've got some holes here. Um, and then we'll be ready to leave this and get set up for part two. Okay, so you'll see I've now got most of the pink laid out, um, but there's still a couple smaller pieces that I have to fill in. And what I'm going to show you now is two things. First, remember all those pieces, the small shards you put separately before? Those are going to come in handy now because those may actually fit into some of these spaces that you need to fit smaller pieces in. So if they do, you can kind of line them up now. You might have to shift some and squeeze them in, but if any of those fit, use those now. Um, the other thing you can do is actually cut some larger pieces smaller. So I've got a couple pieces here and I'm going to take my nippers again with my protective eyewear. And I'm just going to nip those pieces smaller. So this one I think I cut it in two and I think one of those will fit here and this other piece will fit right here. And so you can do that with a couple pieces. And then fill in what is left. And once you've done that, then fill in the other colors and we're almost done. And one of the reasons I like this project so much is it's actually a really good community project also where you can have people either design their own stepping stones or 
fill in the stepping stones you designed, but I used this project three years in a row with a youth group I was working with where we would lay everything out and then people at the block party could just come out and fill in their mosaics. Um, and it was a really great way to engage people in making things um, on site. And then after the block party, we could finish step two, which you'll see in the next video. pieces I want in the bin but when you get to the end and you need some smaller pieces it's often easier to dump them out. Just again remember when you scoop them back into the bucket use either a glove or something to sweep them. Don't run your hands across them. That is how you get hurt. And so again I'm at that point where I think I'm going to need to cut some pieces down. I'll put my goggles on, get my nippers out, and see what I can actually find. Decided I don't love these polka dots I put around the outside so I am just going to cover those over and the nice thing about this is you can do that as you go if you decide some part of your design isn't working just lay the glass out a little bit differently or cover it over and that is totally fine the other thing you can do is if you're making these and a group is going to work on them is you can use different color sharpies to draw out different parts of the design and that will give somebody kind of a guide to go by um, in order to fill the glass in. So this um, bin of glass actually had quite a few smaller pieces in it, so I've been able to fill in most of what I needed as I went. There's still a few little spots to fill in though, so you can see I've trimmed some smaller pieces just to put those in here. So I'll see if this will be good enough to fill these last spots. Sometimes you will have to readjust a couple pieces um, if you find you don't have quite the right one to fit. Or you can just cut another smaller piece to fit in there. So there is our complete uh, mosaic design. Keep an eye out for video two. That will show us how to thin set this design to the stepping stone and then how to ground it so it'll be done and you can put it in your garden for yard. Um, big thanks to Keswick for making this video happen. And thank you for watching. Again, I'm Sarah McCann from my home studio. See you next time.